Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and we are glad George is on your mind. Uh, this is probably one of my all-time favorite states of investments, and I'll explain to that to you sh uh, that to you shortly. Uh, but let's go ahead and get things started. First, if you haven't already done so, please go back and watch uh, Basics of Tax Lien Investing 101. What we've done is we've we're doing a new series of webinar broadcasts, and uh, we're giving you the basic core. Uh, understanding of tax lien investments uh, in the basics of tax lien investing 101. Uh, that way, when you get to state specifics or opportunity specifics, we can make the the presentations a lot shorter uh, than going through everything again, uh, all over again at once. So if you haven't already done so, please go back and take a look at this broadcast. It runs about 45 minutes, uh, but again, it enables us to shorten these down to about 20 minutes each. Okay, so first a little bit about who I am uh, and who PIP is. I began investing in distressed assets, as I'll call them, uh, because tax liens can eventually become, uh, obviously, real estate property foreclosures uh, or a traditional type of distressed asset. Uh, I started at the age of 23 while bar bartending full-time in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, two years later, I started a tax lien servicer firm. It was just four clients uh, and you know, uh, I believe it was $80,000. Uh, and I started that firm with a small loan from my father uh, to get things going. Seven years later, uh, things were going really well and I ended up selling my model or the company at the time uh, to a large Canadian venture capitalist that wanted to get into the tax lien business. Um, there was obviously no non-complete clauses in there. So uh, with a new partner, um, many of you may have heard the name Don Fullman. Uh, Don is now retired, but with my new partner, Don, we started Platinum Investment Properties uh, at, back in 2004. Uh, we still just had a handful of clients at that point and a few hundred thousand in capital. Uh, to date, we now have uh, Platinum Investment Properties Group, which consists of three offices, as well as I'm CEO of Vision Tax Lien Services, which more or less handles the institutional side of the business, uh, due diligence, REO offload, that sort of thing for hedge funds and banks. Uh, uh, so to date, we have over $150 million in tax default assets or and or REOs uh, under management between these two firms. And we've got over 600 active customers. Uh, so we've come a long ways in, in a fairly short period of time. Uh, and we keep growing and growing and growing. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started and get into what it is we do. All right, so before we dive too deep, I want to say don't believe the hype. Uh, Obviously, there's a lot of, uh, we'll call them tax lien gurus uh, that are out there that promote a lot of pie in the sky opportunity. Tax liens can be a great high yield conservative investment. However, there's a lot of work that does go into it. Uh, so it's not just go by uh, and kick back and wait for the funds to come in. What I've done here and this is going to be a slide that will carry over to every single one of our educational presentations uh, because I think it's very important uh, for everybody to understand. I've taken a snapshot of some of the things I've seen, read, heard, uh, experienced from other tax lien gurus. Uh, you will earn 8 to 25 percent government guaranteed or you will receive a free and clear tax deed. Basically, a tax deed is not free and clear, with the exception of a couple of states. Uh, there is a requirement to do title certification, which we'll discuss briefly uh, in a future broadcast, or do a quiet title, quiet title action, which we'll also discuss. Um, it sounds too good to be true, but it's the law. Uh, again, yes, state legislation uh, dictates how the processes of tax sales are conducted, how redemptions are paid, and so on. However, there's still a lot that's involved in that law uh, that requires you know, constant monitoring and engagement. Uh, my favorite, turn $20,000 into $20 million in one year. Folks, that's never going to happen. And we're going to show you 
multitude of examples of why that's not going to happen. Yes, again, you can make really good profits in this industry, but you're not going to turn $20,000 into $20 million in one year. Uh, this is essentially going under the assumption that, that property taxes are 1% of your property value. So assuming a $20,000 a year tax bill on a $20 million property, what this doesn't take into account is fines that have already collected on to the um, tax lien before it goes to tax sale, the cost of advertising for the tax sale, the cost to attend the tax sale, and a number of other costs that are involved before it even gets to sale. So there's no way ever ever you're going to turn twenty thousand dollars into twenty million dollars even in five years uh certainly not in one year and then the last one we bought this property at a florida tax sale for just five hundred dollars it was so easy no they didn't there's no way they bought that property for five hundred dollars florida has probably one of the most uh, unique tax sale circumstances uh, of any other state you go to a tax lien sale in Florida and then you actually have to go back two and a half years later to a tax deed sale. Uh, additional taxes are going to accumulate, additional fees, additional fines, additional advertising costs uh, and then you're going to be competing with other folks that are going to bid up at that tax sale. Uh, you know, if this property was sold for just $500 at the tax sale, the roof would be caved in, the windows would be gone, the plumbing would be gone, the dock would be falling in the water. Uh, so again, I just want to put it out there that we're talking about the truth of the opportunities involved in investing in tax liens in uh, various states. So why I love Georgia? Um, Georgia is a great state, uh, first of all, because the laws are very simple to understand. Uh, compared to some of the other states we're involved in, even, well, we'll use the, the term a fifth grader could do it. Uh, the laws are very easy to understand. Essentially, you make an investment. Uh, it's a penalty state. You're in 20% in that state. Uh, sales are also nearly every month. <clears throat> By law, the statutes actually state that it's the first Tuesday of every month, but tax commissioner has the rights to delay a sale if they don't have a lot of properties available that month. Um, annualized returns are also usually better than advertised because it is a penalty state. We will look at that a little closer uh, as we get into this presentation. PIP dominates the competition in the state of Georgia. Uh, there's a few reasons why. Uh, one, because we are such a large buyer in the state of Georgia, but also our primary competition in other states is going to be banks and hedge funds who do not invest in Georgia. Uh, there's a lot of background as to why that's the case, but what it does is it, it limits uh, the competition to individual tax buyers. Um, and so we would be technically the institutional tax buyer in the Georgia tax sales. So it, it enables us to, you know, kind of kind of be the, the big bully in the room, if you will. Um, <clears throat> Another reason we like Georgia is bank foreclosures are going on simultaneously with the tax sales. Georgia is what we consider a uh, property investor state, and that is uh, most investors who go into Georgia are looking for uh, property as a result of their investment in tax liens. Uh, so with the bank foreclosures going on at the same time, we can attend the bank foreclosure auctions at the same time we're attending the tax sales. Uh, and an important one to me is the client realization of the potential is in less than a year. Why is that important to me? Because when compared to, let's say, Illinois, which is a three-year redemption period, clients can see uh, the redemptions come in uh, gradually as liens get redeemed and rollovers happen and they invest in new tax liens next year. Um, in Georgia, it's much quicker. It's either going to be foreclosed on after one year or we're buying a bank foreclosure and we're taking title to the property immediately and beginning rehabs and, and that sort of thing. So the client gets a really good feel for what we're doing uh, right away and a clear understanding of how the investment works and how the rollers are processed uh, and whatnot. But we'll get into that a little bit more of that as we go through this. 
Okay, so like I said, Georgia is a very simple state to understand. If you can do uh, simple arithmetic, you can understand how the profits are realized in Georgia tax sales. Georgia pays a penalty rate of 20% of the total purchase price of the lien. That means if we have a minimum bid of $5,000 and we bid that up to $60,000, that means that the homeowner then has to come and redeem or pay off that tax lien for $60,000 plus 20%. Uh, penalty also means that it's paid the next day. So in Georgia, if we go to a tax sale on a Tuesday and the homeowner comes in to the tax commissioner's office on Wednesday and says, hey, I want to pay off this lien, uh, they have to pay the full 20%. It's not prorated throughout the year. Uh, and that's why we say the annualized returns are usually actually better than advertised. You know, however, the downside to that is uh, you know, they do have a year to pay that before you can foreclose the right to redeem. Uh, so you're carrying 20%, which is still really good. You're carrying 20% for 12 months. Uh, so what that enables us to do is if they come in at, say, the three-month mark, and they say, you know, can you work with us at all on this? Uh, we 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 can uh, we can negotiate with them to get it redeemed quicker, uh, and then the redemption amount is actually, you know, let's say 18% or 17%. But it's redeemed in three months. We get to go do it again. So again, that's why the annualized uh, actual return is usually higher than we advertise. Uh, and so in this example, uh, property value of $100,000, the minimum bid was $5,000, uh, it sold for $60,000. This would be typical of one of our average purchases in Illinois, uh, excuse me, in Georgia. Uh, so the total cost to redeem would have been $72,000 on this particular investment. So something I always like to do is... Uh, capture verbatim from either a county website that's discussing tax liens or the state legislative uh, statutes regarding the tax liens uh, and more or less copy and paste that into our presentations uh, just in case you want to go do some of your own research and additional due diligence. <clears throat> this one happens to come from uh, a, uh, a county in Metro Atlanta. Uh, so. Basically, it outlines the process. Again, the uh, sales are held the first Tuesday of the month. That is discretionary based on the tax commissioner's decision. They can delay the sale uh, a month or two if they don't have a lot of inventory to sell that month. Uh, or if, uh, you know, for instance, uh, the month of July, a lot of uh, commissioners take that month off. One, because they won't get as many attendees because so many people are going to be on vacation. Uh, but also, too, because these sales are technically held on the courthouse steps uh, and it is just super hot outside in, in Georgia in the month of July. Uh, but typically, t uh, sales are held, held first Tuesday of every month. A tax deed recording is provided following the sale. Now, Georgia is what we consider a hybrid state. Uh, essentially, what a hybrid state means uh, is that you are provided a tax deed at the close of the sale, but it acts like a lien. You've got a tax deed in your hand, but you don't have the right to go sell that property or go even uh, trespass on that property. Uh, the property can be redeemed just like a tax lien certificate can be redeemed for the first year. Uh, but what you do get is a deed to the property that day. Uh, after one year, you have the right to foreclose the right of redemption. Uh, the other two terms basically just explain the type of payment uh, they take and the sale closing, what they're conveying, uh, and, and so forth. Again, this webinar is going to go pretty darn quick because Georgia is such an easy state. Um, this example down here was uh, this summer. Um, Tax sale price was $28,500. Zillow comps, which again, uh, if you've ever heard me speak, I don't put a lot of faith into Zillow. Um, we do use it as a baseline for us, uh, but it's not, it is not the end-all, be-all evaluation of a property. Um, county assessed value on it was $87,000. The last sale was about four years ago for $94,500. Now, because we've got so much experience in investing in tax default real estate, I can look at this property, even though it was sold in tax sale, I can look at this and say this is going to redeem in the next six months. Um, you know, So we do consider Georgia to be a... 
uh, a property investors type of state uh, because the laws are quick and aggressive. However, it is still a great state for the redemption investor. And again, if you go back to basics 101, you'll understand the terminology between the two. Uh, so this this particular investment would have been a redemption investors type of investment because again when we went by and we do the due diligence and the inspection we look at this property and we say wow it's really well maintained it's well manicured uh, you know they've even got a, a U.S. flag hanging out there that looks fairly new um, this is going to redeem uh, it, it probably didn't need to come into the tax sale either the mortgage company where the tax taxes are escrowed into their mortgage payment screwed up which we often we see often, uh, or they just misstepped and forgot to pay an installment on their taxes. Nonetheless, if we were investing in this property, which we did, uh, we would have done so on behalf of a redemption investor rather than a property investor, because we know this is going to redeem, and we are going to take a lot of extra steps to try and force that redemption to happen. Okay, again, we're just going through the process uh, that we pulled from a local uh, Metro Atlanta County's website uh, basically stays 12 months after the date of sale the purchaser can terminate or foreclose on the owner's right to redeem so we're at 12 months in a day now you still don't have right to go walk on that property we have to foreclose those rights uh, on behalf of uh, the homeowner we have to foreclose the rights to redeem uh, so what that entails is engaging legal representation to actually go through the formal process of judicial foreclosure um, it can sometimes be a lengthy process or it can go really quickly depending on whether or not the foreclosure is contested or not uh, right of redemption 20 percent as i said premium in the first year a fraction of a year so that means not prorated uh, and then once we foreclose the right to redeem an additional 10 percent of all your costs involved special assessments taxes attorney's fees uh, all accrue the additional 10 percent premium um, that's pretty much the long and short of it like i said georgia is very easy i'm gonna give it about 10 seconds so you guys can find your pause button and read through these uh, statutes a little closer and then we'll move on to the next slide All right, so just like that, we are all ready to the frequently asked questions of Georgia tax sale investments. So what's due diligence is involved? Uh, Georgia has a very aggressive tax buyer friendly set of statutes. Uh, so any time we go into a Georgia investment, we are looking at the investment as if the investor is going to own the property outright uh, eventually. Uh, so we're looking at forecasting repairs, um, forecasting any problems we may see, title issues. We really pull what we call a broker price opinion on steroids. Um, that's a BPO. Uh, you know, we're, we're digging in deep to understand where this thing's going to be a year from now. Uh, and what expectations can can we plan for ahead of time, which also translates into our exit strategy on behalf of the investor. Uh, how much of the PIP assessed value are you willing to bid up on the acquisition? Now, we use the PIP assessed value because it is our own valuation. Uh, BPOs by agents or county assessments or Zillow or anything else out there doesn't take into account time value of money. It doesn't take into account deterioration while we're waiting for the redemption to, period to expire. It doesn't take account any of those things. Uh, so as a generalization, we try to stay below 60% of what we feel the current value of the property is. Now current sounds like as of today, but our current valuation is taking into consideration deterioration a year from now as well. Uh, so we try to stay at 60% or below. Uh, that way, when we get into actually foreclosing and whatnot, uh, you're making you know, at least 25% uh, or above net profits on the acquisition. Uh, so again, 60% bid 
of what we feel the current value is. So if it's $100,000, we're bidding $60,000 in our example shown earlier. How long does it take place to place funds? Georgia, because they are every month, uh, it can sometimes take us you know, one, two, sometimes even three months to get your funds placed. If, if the product that particular month is marginal, we'll hold off and wait and go to another set of sales the following month. We're usually scattered across five sales per month. So we will get your funds placed, but it just depending on the timing, if you happen to invest in June and we're skipping July, that may have an effect on it, or we just, we're not happy with, with the product that's being sold that particular month. We know we could do better if we wait and see what's coming into the pipeline the next month. Uh, you know, so generally we'll get it done in the first month, but it could take up to three. Uh, if you're defined as the interest investor, is there a strategy in Georgia? Uh, touched on this a little bit in the previous slide. Yes, there is. Uh, essentially, what we do is in our due diligence and our on-site inspections, we look at the property, we look at the title, and we say, somebody boo-booed here. If this ends up in the tax sale, we're going to buy it on behalf of a interest investor because we know this thing's going to redeem. And then what we do is we just get very aggressive to uh, notify the homeowners that it was sold in a tax sale, notify the mortgage company so somebody comes out and redeems that property as quickly as possible. And the, co uh, the cost to foreclose the right to redeem, they're going to vary just like any foreclosure cost in any state or investment. Uh, generally speaking, it's going to be about $2,000 plus back taxes and whatnot. So you're talking about $2,000 for the, uh, the professional fees or the attorney's fees. Um, if it's uncontested, if it is contested or we discover in the notification process that the county didn't do something that they were supposed to do, that can slow it down a little bit and increase the costs. Uh, they're not going to triple by any means, but yes, the costs will go up because additional efforts have to be made, additional filings, that sort of thing. Um, but generally speaking, it's going to be about $2,000 per property to foreclose. All right, so this is about as close as I'm ever going to get to referencing infomercials. Uh, but George is so simple, I, I figured I'd throw a slide in there. Uh, we've got the OxyClean guy and uh, the ShamWow guy. and But wait, there's more. As I mentioned briefly, bank foreclosures happen simultaneously as tax sale foreclosures. And because we are more or less heavily weighted on investing in Georgia on behalf of the property investor, we're actually attending those bank foreclosure sales as well. So bank foreclosures, again, are the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, we take possession the same day. Uh, if we're successful in a bid at the bank foreclosure, we'll go and take a look at the property. Uh, we'll kind of you know, kick the brick, so to speak, um, and poke our heads in the windows. We won't access the property right away. Uh, we'll actually wait until the deed comes in because it's just safer to be, do it that way. Deed usually comes in uh, within 30, 45 days, uh, and then we'll start uh, entering the property and lining up contractors, whatever we need to do to, to maximize the resale of the property. Um, because of that, the turnaround time to fix flip or cash flowing it, i.e. renting it or putting a contract for deed on it, is about nine months. Uh, that is investment to cash out. So one way or the other, if you're fixing and flipping it, that's including the resale and the closing of the property, which again, we're a turnkey service provider. So if, you, if you're doing this through us, all of that's handled on your behalf. Uh, average returns to date have been a net of 26% and above. Uh, we've been in Georgia for quite a while, but we've been getting into Georgia very quietly and very slowly. We are now ready to get very aggressive and get in deep into the counties that uh, we really feel we have a good control over as far as who our resale listing agents are, who our bidders are, our inspectors are, as well as our contractors. Uh, so they get in, out, and out very quickly. They do the job right. They do the job at the prices we expect. Um, so the picture at the bottom here, this is actually a, I took this picture at an auction again this summer and you see the lady with the blue circle around her head. 
um, and, and the megaphone and the lady standing next to her, that lady is conducting the tax sale on behalf, behalf of the tax commissioner's office. If you look around, you see all the red heads or the red circles. Those are all foreclosure auctions that are happening at the same time. Um, in this particular auction, there's usually about five, but I could only identify four in this picture. Um, of five or six, and I've got four in this picture. They're actually all, with the exception of the gentleman on the far right, they're all reading them off at the same time. So you really got to know what you're doing and really be paying attention and up to speed uh, so you're not missing out on the bank foreclosure opportunity while you're trying to take advantage of the tax sale opportunity. Okay, so here we have uh, two Georgia investments that are fairly recent. Um, and one was acquired and resold through a tax sale. One was acquired and sold, resold through a bank foreclosure. Um, give you a few seconds to tell me, well, not tell me, tell yourself if you know which is which. Okay, that's right. The top one was a bank foreclosure. The bottom one was a tax sale foreclosure. How do we know that? Because the duration of the investment was nine months on the top one and the duration on the bottom one was 12, 14 months. Uh, so we got in there. We didn't have a contested um, foreclosure on the one on the bottom. We were able to fix it up and, and flip it out pretty quickly. On the top one, it was a bank foreclosure. We got in there almost immediately. Uh, it did sit on the market for a little longer than we anticipated, but still well within the parameters. Uh, so as you can see, at a bank foreclosure, you're going to spend a little more against your margins, but you're going to be able to turn it more quickly. On the bottom, you're going to sit on it a little longer, but you're going to pay less. Uh, so that's the big difference between uh, going for property via tax sale or going for property via bank foreclosure. In the end, they're both going to net out annualized returns that are going to be very similar. Uh, on this one up top, you know, the bank foreclosure was a little more than half the time it took for the uh, tax sale foreclosure, but the net profits were a bit less. If we annualize that out, they're probably going to come out to be very close and very similar. This is why when we go into Georgia on behalf of an investor, we will first make very clear if they are interested in the interest or if they want the property to flip and get that, uh, that good punch off of the fix and flip or the fix and cash flow uh, scenario. If they are an interest investor, we're not looking at these two properties. We're looking at something that's occupied and manicured like we showed you in the previous example. Again, I'm going to stop talking for about 10 minutes so you guys can find your mute, uh, your pause buttons and uh, look at these uh, breakdowns a little more closely. As of today, this is our most recent Georgia acquisition to example for you. And this is pretty typical of the state we're going to find any foreclosure or tax sale property acquisition in. Um, this one actually is pretty clean. And, you know, I often say in a lot of my presentations, don't judge a book by the cover uh, because I walk in the front door of this property and I see opportunity opportunity abound. It's going to be cheap to make the repairs. We've got to gut it and clean it out. But, you know, other than that, this, this thing is going to be is going to get a nice facelift and it's not going to be that bad. So you see the before pictures here. Uh, you see what we paid for it, 39500 Obviously, this is all the before. And again, this this is what we walk into um, on a daily basis. This is what we see when you walk into a foreclosed property. Uh, it's going to look uh, just like this, if not worse. And this is the after. As you can see, we didn't need to do that much. We cleaned it out. Uh, we put some linoleum in there. We had the bushes and the yard trimmed up. We put some paint in there and we refinished the floors. Um, not much needed at all. Uh, $12,000 $12, exactly in repairs. So the total investment was $52,000. Um, the sale price 
was 89,000 for a total profit of 20,490. That's a that's a total net net profit. Uh, and the duration of the investment was nine months. Um, this ended up being a VA loan, which is why it actually took longer. Uh, we had this thing turned around literally within three weeks of the acquisition. Um, you'll notice if you look at all of our property samples, if we've had our hands on it as far as repairs are concerned, our color schemes are almost always the same. You'll notice that we usually paint the houses this grayish blue. Uh, the interior walls are, are you know, a khaki uh, with, with a bright white trim. Um, these are modern neutral colors which are attractive to really any investor. It gives them you know, a clean classic look, but it also allows them to see a palette of their own tastes. Uh, if they were to come in and imagine this wall being this color, this wall being this color. And that's obviously done very intentionally uh, because it sells the homes quicker. Um, so again, working with us, all of this is handled on your behalf. Uh, but this is the after pictures of our most recent example, which happened to be around the corner from me in Savannah, Georgia. Oh, and finally, it was a bank foreclosure, again, obviously, because the duration was, again, nine months, like the previous example. That's pretty much it, folks. Um, like I said, pretty, pretty simple processes in Georgia to understand tax sales or bank foreclosures. To me, they're one and the same. They offer very similar annualized returns. In a tax sale, you're going to pay a little less up front but you're gonna to have to wait a little longer. Bank foreclosures, you're gonna pay a little more, but you're gonna take possession immediately. Um, tax sales could redeem tomorrow. It could redeem a year from tomorrow. We just, you know, that's something that's unpredictable. If it is a play that we're trying to get it to redeem, we will take steps necessary to try to force that process to happen more quickly. 30, 40% profit in about 15 months is roughly what we're doing with the tax sale acquisitions. Uh, 20 to 30 percent profit in about eight months is roughly what we're doing with the bank foreclosures. Uh, average investments, they're pretty much the same. Uh, we buy because of the margins we're looking at. We're not buying $150,000 homes. You know, $150,000 home cash flow is probably going to get you $1,200 a month in rent in Savannah, Georgia, a $75,000 home is going to get you $1,000 in rent. Uh, so we are focused on those fifty dollars to $70,000 acquisitions because it's going to have huge potential on the cash flow. It's going to have huge potential on the fix and flip potential. So that's where our focus is. Um, and again, Georgia is my favorite because it's so easy. The turnaround is so quick. It's so easy to, uh, you know, give that client a result that is very easy for them to put their hands on and understand. Some of our other investments, uh, you know, you can't grab it and say, okay, yes, they bought this for $50,000. If they sell it tomorrow without putting another penny in it, I know they'll get $65,000. Uh, with Georgia, you can do that and we do do that. Uh, so it makes it so much easier. Um, so that pretty much wraps it up. The last couple of slides are just closing statements, which you've probably already seen or heard before if you've followed the rules and you went to Basics 101 first. Um, very much encourage anyone interested in investing in tax liens or default real estate to go take a look at a Georgia sale. Engage us if you want to get into Georgia sales uh, or we'll see you at the auctions. Um, either way, we, we hope to, to earn your business and we hope to get you started in Georgia right away. All right, getting started. Uh, very easy. If you just go to our homepage uh, or any page on our website, you'll find a link for forums and brochures. Uh, and you can download basically anything you can imagine with regards to getting started on your investments in Illinois or anywhere else. Uh, you'll find our agency agreements, our fee schedules. Um, instructions uh, per state, uh, instructions if you're using a self-direct IRA, you name it. And if you can't find what you're looking for, you can always give our office a call. Uh, the phone number is there, my email is there, uh, and our website is there. So um, 
tons of resources on the web. Obviously, you got this webinar by visiting our website. Uh, everything is there for you. If but if you need anything, you know that it, it can be a bit of a uh, undertaking to get through all the instructions and the forms that are necessary, especially if you're a self-direct IRA cust uh, customer. Uh, so uh, we are here to help and we'll be happy to assist you in walking through those forms uh, and answer any questions you have. Okay, so this is just a kind of a canned slide. Um, Many of you have probably noticed that there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes with, with PIP. And one of those is we are updating all our online broadcasts. All of our broadcasts are always free. We do broadcasts on behalf of self-direct IRA custodians. Uh, we do our own, we do pre-records, and we do live. You should have a library uh, that's either already in there or it's coming soon on our website. Uh, I know Illinois tax liens is already there. We've just completed Georgia tax sales and foreclosures. Uh, and I invite everyone to check back because this is the, the core of events that we plan to post in our library, but there will always be new ones coming in. Uh, so if, if you're wanting to stay up to speed and stay informed about your investments uh, or about new opportunities we offer, I always invite uh, clients to, and prospects to come back and take a look and see if anything new has been posted. And finally, uh, if you don't want to bother with the webinars, I hope you do because we try to give as much information and content to make you as knowledgeable an investor as possible. If you don't, or if even if you still do, uh, go and download our uh, free copy of the Beginner's Guide to Investing in Real Estate Tax Liens, Tax Deeds, and REOs. Uh, again, you'll find that link on the homepage of our website uh, as well as throughout the website. If you want a hard copy, you can just email me and we'll be happy to send you one. We've got them in the office. Um, it's an 88-page uh, 5 by 8 handbook, uh, so we'll be happy to provide that to you. Just give our office a call, or you can email me directly, or you can download it online uh, via a PDF. There's more examples in there and a little more detail than what we're able to provide in these singular uh, broadcasts. Thanks so much for paying attention and uh, watching the Illinois uh, broadcast. We look forward to speaking to you more and hope we can assist you with your investments in Illinois tax liens. Thank you.